Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Neil Cross of the Symmetry UK webcast. This present about Autodesk Inventor and its general uh, purpose in life. What is it and what is it all about? So Inventor is a 3D uh, digital prototyping application. Um, it's a 3D. It's also a 3D modeling application and a specific uh, specialized engineer's tool. So what I'm doing here is I'm in an Inventor sketch, which is a two-dimensional two sketch, drafting out two concentric circles which will ultimately create a 3D part file uh, which will be a manufacturable piece. So once you've created your two-dimensional sketch and you're happy enough with that you can extrude that two-dimensional sketch into a 3D solid and in this case I'm going 40 millimeters either side of where my sketch was lying so it gives me 20 mil either side. Now that that sketch is complete and my solid is formed I can create a sketch through the middle of that part file where I can then create further sketches to define further features in my manufacturable part. So here I'm creating just a very basic conceptual sketch, it's almost freehand. Then in Inventor you create a series of what are called constraints. These constraints will then firm up and fix in place any geometry that you've conceptually sketched. And you can create those uh, constraints through various different ways. This one that I've just used here is a symmetrical constraint that will force those two lines over and above and below the construction line to be symmetrical and they will follow, follow each other as so. We then got dimensional constraints which although they take the appearance of normal traditional dimensions they actually force certain parts of your model to be certain lengths, distances, radii or angles. So in this case I've created a 20 degree angle, 57 mil length, a 6 mil arc radius and then we're going to finalize this by extruding that sketch up and creating it into a solid which looks like it is now attached to the outer side or the cylindrical surface of that solid piece. Now we're creating a circular pattern. Rather than create this item five more times, I'm actually going to pattern it around that solid six times in total to give us a solid pattern. Then fill it the items. So I'm going to take each edge, each concentric and sorry, each concave and convex edge and fill it those edges. We can also create industry standard bolt holes, screw holes, um, based on standard thread types, isometric thread profile, size 6, through all of the solid and it will also tap that hole for us as well. Now I need some more holes around that solid, so what am I going to do? Well I'm not going to do that five more times again, just go back into the pattern tool, pick up the hole, spin that hole around the centre of my part, to tell it how many times I want to create a pattern. Alternatively, I can link the number of patterned holes to the number of patterned legs, so we've got an identical link between those two features. Next I want to do, I want to create a cutout from underneath the side of those legs. So I'm going to create a sketch through the middle of my solid. I'm just going to slice the graphics. That's just basically creating a very temporary cross section. And then I can form a sketch where I want the cut to be. Dimension that up. Tell Invent that I want it to be 14 mil by uh, 5 mil. And that will firm up that sketch for me. I can then exit my sketch and then revolve that profile around the centre of my part. That will spin that rectangle around the centre of the part and anything that it comes into contact with it will cut. And that creates a machined like feature. What I want to do next as well is just put a quick texture on the model. Uh, again just for aesthetic purposes I'm going to make it aluminium and then I can make certain features certain texture again just for that machine look give the bottom side of that cut a chromed finish and what of what about things like mass properties well inventor lets you take uh, mass uh, center of gravity calculates all that based on the uh, physical properties of the model that you've generated. We can view the center of gravity by switching on the glyph. That yellow sphere that you can see there is the center of gravity itself. You can also view the numerical properties of the center of gravity uh, with an inventor. So that's a 3D model generated very quickly and very easily. Um, next I want to create a 2D technical drawing of my part. Um, this is usually the most difficult part of any uh, draftsman's life is create the 2D technical drawing. Um, but with an inventor it's very quick and easy to do. All you do is create uh, the 3D model, start up a drone, and then you're placing views of a 3D model. The 3D model already exists, so it's very easy for inventors to create the drawing because um, all the geometry already exists. You can then place dimensions, uh, no typing in any of the dimensions, they're all reflecting the one-to-one -one modeled size of the piece part. So they've got the angular dimension on there, uh, diameter dimension, we can also create uh, section views, so that's a case of telling Inventor where you want a section apart, drop down a section line, 
uh, pull the resulting view away, drop it on the sheet, it will automatically hatch that section view for you and label it. And very important to a lot of people is the, the ability to change a model and have the drawing update. And again, that's something which is pretty much taken for granted in Inventor because it's, it's bread and butter. Modify the model and the drawing will instantly, immediately update, reducing the need to do any more work. And that's always a good thing. So thank you for watching and please browse around our channel for some more useful video tips and tricks.